Hi, this is Robert Stelic with the Zen Waterman blog and Blue Planet Surf. And this is part five of the paddle stroke technique, um, technique series. So uh, just to recap real quick, if you, if you went through the first four parts, you learned about choosing the right paddle, so you should have the right paddle already. Uh, part two was uh, the power phase, so you should already know how to get a powerful stroke. Uh, part three was stacking the shoulders, which means getting the paddle straight up and down and applying the power so it propels you forward. And then part four was reach and catch uh, to get, get a good reach forward and catch the blade fully to get a good, good catch in the front. So now part five, I'm going to talk about the recovery. And also somewhat related to the recovery is the paddle length and also the grip height, like where you grip the paddle with the lower hand. So we're going to go over these things today. So the recovery is really key because it gives you a moment to relax between each stroke. So use that recovery to relax your muscles before you power into the next stroke. Most beginners pull the paddle too far back, then they drop the hand to the side, and then they don't come forward enough for the next stroke. And, it, and usually the stroke is kind of a little bit too far back, using too much of the arms and so on. But let's talk about um, getting an efficient, quick recovery so you can get another good stroke in. And the most efficient part of your stroke is the front of your stroke. Try to get forward as far as you can, end it by your feet, and then pull it out. So uh, let's go over two ways of pulling the paddle out, out of the water. So one way is to drop your top hand like this. And by dropping it, you kind of your wrist twists also, and that automatically feathers your blade. So that's kind of important. When, when I see beginners, they usually bring the paddle forward like this with the blade facing straight forward. If you're paddling into the wind, the, this has a lot of wind resistance. So what you want to do is feather the blade and bring it back forward sideways. So during the forward motion, your paddle should be sideways and, and kind of slicing through the wind instead of having the surface, a lot of surface area into the wind. So one way to do that is to drop your top hand and that way it automatically feathers and then take the next stroke. So but by doing that, I make a really big circle with my top hand and with the paddle. So it's not a very efficient motion. So uh, the, the other extreme is to pull the paddle straight up out of the water, move it forward in a straight line, stick it straight down and take your next stroke. And that, that way you're just making a line, which is kind of it's more efficient because it has less motion. So, and then most people have a little bit of both. So you pull it straight up and a little bit to the side. So and you're kind of making an oval shape with the top hand. One thing that's really important uh, is to choose the right paddle length too. So for surfing, my paddle length is a little bit shorter, like where I can, uh, you know, like a few inches under my wrist if I reach up all the way. Um, this is my pa surfing paddle for distance paddling or racing and so on. I like to use a quite a bit longer paddle. So if you look at these, there's a, I don't know, maybe five, five, six inches difference in my, and on my racing paddle, I can't really get my wrist over it, but I can, you know, it's maybe at my palm height if I fully extend it up. So, and with a longer paddle, you get better reach forward. You can reach the paddle further forward for a good reach. And then also when you're driving the paddle, you can drive it deep into the water. You can push down on it. You can lean down on it. And then, but what I find the limiting factor on length, like where you don't want to go too long, is you want to still be able to lift the paddle out of the water when you get to your feet. So uh, right now I'm pretty far off the sand, so I can lift this up pretty easily. But this is one, something you want to try, like if you're standing on the floor, if I had a board that had, had a very deep cutout where you're standing at water level, it makes it very difficult to lift the paddle out of the water right here because I'm already fully extended with my top arm and I can't really lift it up any higher. So I pretty much have to drop my top arm to get the paddle out if I'm very close to the water surface. So the thickness of the board is really important too. If you have a thick board, you're standing several inches on, over, over the surface of the water, you can go a couple inches longer, but if you have a board where you're standing right at water level, um, if you're standing on the ground, you should still be able to lift that paddle off the ground. If, if it's longer than that, 
it's just too long, you're gonna, you're just gonna ruin your technique. So the paddle can be too long. Some people think, uh, you know, the longer the better, but that's not the case. So, and then for surfing, it's nice to have a little bit more compact paddle, but you definitely also don't want a paddle that's too short because then um, you can't get good reach forward. And also you, you tend to like always um, be uh, bent over a little bit, which is hard on your lower back. You want to be able to fully stand up straight during your catch and then lean into it during the stroke. <laughs> like you lean onto the paddle during your stroke. At the end of the stroke, you stand up straight again for the reach. Okay, another thing is the, the grip height. And on this paddle, I have this um, grip tape. And the way I position it on the paddle is I make right angles with both elbows like this, holding the top of the blade like this, and then right angles with both elbows. That gives me kind of the power position of my paddle. This is where, where I want to hold the paddle if I'm going, say, straight into the wind, and I get a good leverage on the paddle. Um, so that's where I start the tape. And by having this grip tape on here, I kind of know my relative position on, of where, the, where my hand is on the paddle. And so if you don't want to use grip tape, you can also put like a little piece of electric tape or something around your paddle. So you can kind of mark that spot, your power position, and then maybe put another tape a little bit further up. So, um, you know, if you're re relaxed choosing, you can hold your paddle a little bit higher. And also for steering strokes, if you want to take a stroke that's kind of far away from your board, then you can hold the paddle higher. But if you want to take a powerful stroke, get your hand down there, get better leverage on your paddle. Okay, so um, to do a steering stroke, you can hold the paddle a little bit higher. And then once you're ready to take a good powerful stroke, you want to hold the paddle fairly low, get good catch, and then release your paddle by your feet and get it. Um, get a nice recovery, relax during your recovery, stand up straight, and then fully plant your paddle and take the next stroke. So use that recovery to relax for a moment before you take the next stroke. But you do want to keep it quick. The recovery, if you keep, have a quick recovery, you'll get more strokes in and that's what's going to make you faster. Okay, so let's talk about feathering the blade. Instead of bringing the blade forward like this, you want to have the blade feathered out to the side. So. Uh, when you pull the paddle out, twist, twist with the top hand a little bit and bring the paddle forward um, sideways, okay? So that's important to get the, the feathering. And, and when, you, when you do that feathering at the right moment as you're pulling the paddle out, it'll also give you a nice clean release out of the water and it'll actually help you kind of the, uh, the flex that you load up on the paddle during the stroke you can kind of use that flex to kind of propel the paddle back forward and then it kind of shoots forward by itself almost and that helps you relax also. So if you get a real clean re release with the paddle, it shoots the paddle forward by itself. You don't really have to do much, you can just relax and let the paddle kind of swing forward by itself. Uh, another thing is to lift the paddle with the bottom arm. So what you want to do is kind of use that bottom hand to pull the paddle up and let the, the, the top hand just go along for the ride. Relax your top arm, uh, just push it up with the bottom arm. The top hand just kind of twists, it's like a, twisting a doorknob um, for the feathering. So relax your top arm, just twist, keep your bottom wrist loose so that, so that it can use, easily feather the paddle forward. And then, and then you know, bend your elbow a little bit at the end of the stroke to lift up the paddle and then push the elbow back out for the catch. So um, that's really, during the stroke, your bottom arm should be straight. Just bend it a little bit for the recovery. What I was mentioning, kind of the limiting factor of if your paddle is too long, it can be hard to lift the paddle out right here. So make sure that the paddle is not so long that you can't comfortably pull the paddle out of the water next to your feet. If, if, you're, if you have to drop your hand to get the blade out of the water, your paddle is probably too long. It makes it hard to have a quick, efficient, Tahitian style stroke and you'll end up pulling the paddle way way far back dropping the top hand making this long recovery which is not as efficient as keep keeping your stroke real forward and getting some quick strokes in that'll help you accelerate quickly all right thanks for watching aloha